After spending five days in Wrangell, Alaska, yep, only five to get her ready, we left and I was so excited to get up back on the ocean. But it wasn't as smooth sailing as we thought it would be. There was some waves. And I have to say, I forgot about how I really didn't like this part of cruising. We left the last day of 2019, spent New Year's in Ketchikan, and straight to Prince Rupert to clear her in. Here we are coming into Prince Rupert. Check out this huge shipping port. We're just loading containers upon containers upon containers. After registering our boat into Canada, it was straight into open ocean. Yes, your mom would be pissed off right now. Let's not show her this. I think Krista would be mad too. we ducked into the safety of the inside passage. This is what we woke up to this morning. It is January 4th, 2020. There's snow. It was snowing last night. Luckily I didn't have to bring out the snow shovel, which we do have on board the boat. Coming up Granville, Grenville Channel. We're just in Northern British Columbia right now. It's absolutely stunning. January 4th, 2020. Absolutely stunning. We've seen porpoises, we've had seals, lots of birds. It is cold though, like really cold. So our friends Kyle and Leah on Kismet told us we had to go to Bishop's Bay to check out the hot springs. Well, <laughs> docking was quite interesting. It seriously took Blaine, I don't know, eight times to get to the dock. And there was no wind and no waves. He was so frustrated, but the hot springs were amazing. This is Bishop's Bay hot tub. Check it out. All the marks. And we just put our boat right there. But I don't think we're going to stay there for the night. Dock's a bit small. But there's a lot of snow here. There's no one in. And we're going to pop right in there. Cover your privates. And we just popped into this cove because we're having some generator problems. It's absolutely stunning. Nick and George off Tahoma told us about this cove. Supposedly you can see spirit bears every so often here. 
and I thought cool let's see bears but then I was like wait it's January they are probably hibernating we had a little waterfall there you can see up in the snowy mountains Blaine got the generator fixed and I have to say I was a little bit um, jealous because it was so warm in the engine room and I was so cold on this trip here we are, a beautiful town called Klemtu, all First Nations town, absolutely stunning. We're going to come into the dock, but there's a lot of boats there and it looks a little bit small. You see they've got... ...out into open ocean so we can pop around to go to Bella Bella. We're still heading south, it's a little bit warmer I find. Our anchorage last night was really rolly, so it took a little bit, well, the first half hour of sleeping to find out everything that was banging and ticking, and those of you out there know what I'm talking about. It's always a little adventure to say, where is that sound coming from? is funny so I am cooking pasta and it looks like I have a friggin fire in the kitchen so we're like you know what let's see if we can turn on the fan <laughs> and we go over here and I turn on the fan where is it I don't know if that's working or not <laughs> this boat definitely is has some quirks to it that needs to be fixed yeah definitely looks like I have a fire in my galley picture of this. This is Blaine out doing the anchor and it is shitty out. It just started hailing. You can tell on the deck. And he's up there having a blast. I'm driving. Maybe I should put the video down and pay attention. Look at all that hail on the deck. Luckily, it wasn't the first time I've been in a hailstorm, and I knew it made great ice for drinks because it takes so long to melt. So, it was perfect for my white claw. We are in Perth Bay. We came in last night. It's actually a beautiful little bay, except for maybe the snow is kind of a pain in the butt. But this is the Hakai Institute, and what's nice is they have guest satellite Wi-Fi, so we were able to download the weather. And again, it's snowing. We were going to go put our tender in and go walk the beach, but I think it just might be a, you know, cozy in on the couch and watch a movie day. It is snowing out. We are going to go on shore with the tender, but we haven't taken the tender off yet. So we don't know if the crane works and we don't know if the motor works. So we said the heck with it. We are going to stay cuddled in here, have a cup of tea, watch a cheesy 90s video. Blaine is checking out the weather for Seymour Narrows for when we go around the Cape and look at that snow coming down behind him. Welcome to winter sailing in the northern British The two Columbia. things we did not check before to even wrangle Alaska was if first the crane worked and second if the tender worked. Well thank gosh they did. We put the tender in the water, the motor started first time and we headed over to Calvert Island to really check out the beach on the west side. Seafoam, and I don't know where this one's going, but it's kind of running away from us. I've actually never seen so much foam on a beach like this. Woo -hoo. Where are you going, Blaine? The beach was beautiful, and we promised ourselves that we would return in the summertime for some surfing. This is rat rock and mouse rock. Can't quite see because we're rolling a little bit. But there's a lighthouse with a couple buildings, white house buildings, red roof. See them? That's rat rock and it's guarding mouse rock, which is right there. We have about 10.4 knots. And things are banging. We are coming through Seymour Narrows. I think we've got it right on slack tide, so we've been timing this one. And we've read up a lot about it. We're getting pushed around a little bit, but it's kind of fun.
little bit spinny here. We're just coming under the hydro lines and past Ripple Rock. We're on a ebb tide, or slack tide, sorry. So we actually timed it out pretty good. There's another tug and barge coming in on our port. That will always make my husband happy. No worries. Yeah, you can see where we are right now on the chart. Yeah, see my arrows. Again, about where that log is is where Ripple Rock was. I guess they blew it up. One of the biggest explosions ever. After spending a very windy night in Nanaimo with great friends Allison and Ailey, a weather window opened up and we made the run for Victoria. We really wanted to make it back in time for Izzy's 13th birthday. But first, we had to get through Dodds and Arrows. arrived in Sydney, British Columbia on January 10th, 2020, just in time for Izzy's 13th birthday. And it was so nice to see family again, introduce the boat to the dogs, and the kids had a heyday climbing on her. Are y'all ready? Yeah, I'm already. <laughs> okay, so Alaska. It's a fun trip. It's a fun trip. It was so cold. Like, like <laughs> I remember, well, we had the generator on the whole time. Yep, all we had was little 110 volt space heaters. There's no heaters in this boat, like none. I don't even know why we were bringing it down for Alaska with no heaters on. Nope, it was a game of trying to find what outlets were on different yeah. circuits so we could plug in more than one heater. Oh yeah, we kept blowing the circuit breakers. breakers. Yep. Yes, so we had the heaters going. Um, yeah, getting into bed at night. Yep, yeah, memory foam mattress. Really, really hard when it gets freezing cold. So cold. I remember yeah. just pulling up going like, until it warms up it was like holy cow and your pillow was rock hard yep. but it was a beautiful trip I remember my sister we were heading up there and she's like well wait what are you going to do and it was about mid-December we looked at each other and went screw it let's just go get this boat we need to get it from Alaska down to Victoria yeah gotta get some work done on it can't have it sitting up there falling apart more no but they're all like well you need crew to bring it down I'm like we can't we don't have crew I had no time to ask anybody so Blaine and I said, we can bring this down by ourselves. And we were talking about bringing the kids, but I think it probably, they weren't ready for that. And they were still, no. yeah, they wanted Christmas and everything. So we left right after Christmas and remember Krista going, um, so I've got your power of attorney. You've got really good life insurance. Can you please make sure you come back? Cause I don't want to be a mom to two more kids. <laughs> I can see that really putting a damper on our plans. Yeah. But it was a great trip. Um, Hot Springs were probably one of my favorite yep. places. Bishop Bay, uh, lots of snow, gorgeous. It was cold, but um, thank you so nice much to Kyle and Leah for telling us yep. about it. It was a little bit off the track, but not bad. Nope. But I have to say, well worth the trip. <laughs> it was probably the funniest, and we haven't really told the story. But him docking this boat was. She hasn't told this story on the internet. <laughs> this story has circulated plenty I think amongst it friends. It took about eight times, and there was like no waves, no like no wind, nothing. It was Dead flat calm. calm. Yep. But do you think he could get this boat up to the dock? No. <laughs> and he was just throwing f bombs up. He was so mad and so um, what's the word? Frustrated. frustrated. Yes. Frustrated. Yes. But it's we, only my second time ever docking the boat. It's no excuse. So, well, you got to feel it out. <laughs> it's like parking a car. You, you got to know where the edges are. Yeah. And then Calvert Island. Yeah. We have to still return to Calvert Island and yeah. do some surfing Gorgeous in the summertime. Place. Like the beach was amazing. Yeah. Do you remember what happened in Calvert Island? Yep. Yeah. 
Not so much. Uh, we haven't told anybody when this we're too. Leaving. When we're leaving, mm -hmm. what happened? Uh, engines wouldn't start. Dead yeah. in the water. No. It's a little bit um, scary thought because we're used to sailboats and suddenly you're on this powerboat with no engines and you're like, we can't move. Dead in the water. Right? Yeah. Sailboats, sure, we can put up a sail because, again, that's what we're used to. We travel the world on sailboats, so suddenly it's like, okay, we've got a powerboat. We don't have engines. No so. backup. No. But we figured out why. Yep. Dead batteries. Dead starter batteries. Dead, um, yeah, engine start batteries, 32-volt uh, mm -hmm. bank, which makes challenging just finding parts anywhere well, for that. Who the but... heck has a 32 volts on their boat? Like, it's yeah. just such a weird number. That's uh, old boat. Yeah, so... System. What we did is we seriously we were there and we thought we would have to get the scientists to fly a battery in or something, right? And they were coming in two days, so we thought we were just stuck. We were going to be in Calvert Island. We would have to do something. But we had Wi-Fi there. Calvert Island, thank you so much to the Hakai Institute for having Wi-Fi. So we hopped on and I was watching YouTube and there was this guy and he was like the golf cart king. And I watched this YouTube and he was like, how to charge a golf cart batteries in series. And I'm not the engineer. I don't know this. But he was explaining it in such a he was explaining such a simple manner. He's like eight plus eight is sixteen plus eight is twenty four. You put them all together, you have a twenty four volt plus eight is thirty two. And I'm like, okay, well, this boat has so much stuff on board that I found a twenty four volt charger in a back cabin, and it still worked. So I was like, hey Blaine, what if we did eight plus eight plus eight is twenty four? Won't this work? Mm -hmm. And seriously, you could see the we light just, bulb go off on his head. He broke like, them up in the series and charged them individually with three yeah. and three. And then we prayed. Yep. But the first time you started the engine, it went nothing. So we were like, okay, let's wait for a couple more hours. And so, you know, it was snowing, it was cold. We hunkered in, watched some really cheesy 80s music or uh, movies that we found on board. Again, lots of stuff on board. Yeah. And really then cheesy. he started it again. And all I heard was, whoa, from the engine room. Like it was so loud. Yeah. Yeah, it was it was an exciting point. It was, yeah. but I love Calvert Island. And trying, then trying to think of how to get spare parts to Calvert Island is, I mean, there's nothing anywhere nearby. So we learned you just have to have spares on board. And you got to really think outside the box. Yep. And love Alaska. Highly recommend traveling in the winter time. People thought we were crazy, but it was probably. I I loved it. Some of my favorite cruising ever. You're pulling into anchorages that are just stunning, yeah. and you're not fighting for space. You you're by yourself. Yep. And um, it's quiet. It's uh, It was fantastic. Yeah, it was beautiful. I would totally do it again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Absolutely. So thanks, everybody. Hit the like button. Hit subscribe. Hit the bell below. Really appreciate it. We're building up this YouTube channel. And if you want to know more about our adventures, just watch below. There'll Talk to you guys later. More. Bye. Join us next time when Krista and Dave help us blow up one of our life rafts, something I have always wanted to do.